What is up guys? JBR Tech here and it's long overdue. It is time to talk about the newly released Fujifilm's X-H2S. I've been waiting, I've been watching, and now I narrowed down two reasons why I wouldn't want to upgrade from the X-H1 to the younger brother, the X-H2S. Now the first reason why I wouldn't want to upgrade to the X-H2S is because of the autofocus. I've been watching a lot of films from Fujifilm, directly from Fujifilm and their ambassadors, and they have used it on the field, testing it with the greatest and latest lens that they have, optimized for video. And regardless of all the footages that I've seen, every film has had times where the autofocus had those micro jitters that are plaguing all Fujifilm cameras. Now with that said, we gotta keep in mind throughout this whole video that all the videos we have seen, all the tests and reviews are all using beta firmware and also the pre-production release. So it's not fair to base our judgment on pre-release product, but if Fujifilm is throwing it out there, advertising it. We gotta play fair and tell it how it is. We all know that, that when the X-H1 came out, it just had horrible continuous autofocus. Now, after all the firmware upgrades that it has received, it has gotten better. I got it down to where I could use it in an overhead shot like I'm doing right now, and it's not gonna haunt as much. By the way, no, this is not recorded with autofocus. This is manual lens manual focus regardless the autofocus we can tone down the settings to make it where it's usable and as a heads up i will let you know that some of the best settings i've had with the xh1 is just to put the tracking speed at plus three and then the autofocus speed at minus two so that helps the camera have a balance of trying to hunt for a subject but also slowing down the autofocus auto speed so it doesn't change its mind as fast to try to avoid and decrease the micro jitters but with that said it is there and it's sad to say that a camera a flagship camera coming out in 2022 still has a problem that a 2012 camera has so that is quite unfortunate to see and because of the X-H1, the X-C3, that even the X-T4 do suffer from that micro jitter, leads me to think that it's not gonna get much better unless Fujifilm changes their, I don't know, their algorithm, how the computer chip, the sensor really works with the technology in their new lenses. If they don't fix that, I don't see how autofocus is gonna get better. Now, with that said, I do think that the autofocus is more than enough if it's excellent actually for stills. For photography, there's no doubt in my mind it is quick and fast and with a newer model, newer lenses, it's gonna be even faster. So I have no doubt about that. This camera is designed and advertised for hybrid shooters. We do have to keep in mind the video side of things. And that's the pattern you're gonna notice in this video that I'm making today that most of the cons and pros are related to what shooting mode you're in. Purchasing decision could boil down to what shooter are you? Are you a hybrid shooter? Do you need videos or do you mainly shoot still? That's gonna come in big in contributing whether you're gonna upgrade or not. But as far as autofocus, it's not a reason to upgrade. And for the second issue that really turns me off into upgrading to the X-H2S is the IBIS. Now the IBIS probably has improved again with their firmware and the lenses that are also paired up with the OS. It's probably gonna get a lot better. But again, in the video side, watching all the films that YouTube and uh, Fujifilm producers are throwing at us, 
you're seeing the same issues that the XH1 has, the XT4 has, and even the XS10, I believe it's called, the XS10 also have them. All Fujifilm IBIS cameras suffer from the little twerk. It's not a twerk, it's more like a twitch. When you're panning to the side, all of a sudden just jerks to the side. It's almost like the camera is undecisive on how fast to pan. That problem is just really obvious in a lot of the videos. The issue is still there, so it's just really sad to see that even though we're in a point where it's 10 years later, Fujifilm has really had a chance to see the complaints and the issues that their camera has and have a golden opportunity to fix it. They didn't really end up fixing much. Again, we gotta take this into context. I'm talking about video side. On the still sides, even my X-H1's IBIS works great, fantastic. I could shoot for like 1 15th of a second, even less if I'm careful and you know, just trying to hold tight for dear life, I could get really clean shots at low shutter speed. So again, IBIS, autofocus, and the still sight is fantastic. I have no doubt that the X-H2S also has fantastic autofocus speed uh, pair along with great IBIS. You're gonna have great low light performance shooting stills with that camera. But then again, that's not the only reason that camera was brought up is a hybrid camera. So we gotta take into consideration the video side of things. Now, with that said, it's a fantastic upgrade, just unfortunate those two issues that are still apparent in the X-H2S pre-production um, beta firmware products is just not giving me a lot of hope that it might get fixed later on in the future but definitely Fujifilm is in the right direction. Now I'm gonna talk about a couple of things, a couple of things that are really pros that are tempting for me to upgrade to the X-H2S. But before that, I wanna get one elephant out of the room and that is the, I really have to agree with Fujifilm's decision into separating the X-H flagship models to the X-T models. We can clearly see that they're both heading into a different direction, and that is that XT users are for photography first person. So they have all their dials ready to go, put the settings as they want and just shoot away, whether it's street photography or sports photography, you're gonna have all the quick settings in your hands. Now on the video side, we don't really need to mess with the ISO, with the uh, shutter speed and the aperture when we are recording. We just set the camera and go. And that's why I really like the option of just having a bunch of custom settings on one dial and then just leave you a big old screen on the top of the right side of the camera so you could have quick glance at all your settings and actually like your SD status and the battery and all that good stuff. That is really great. And I do use this little screen that the X-H1 also has. Even with the cameras powered off, I could get a quick lens at how many SD cards I have and the battery status and also how much recording time I have left. Or if I'm switch over to the still size, I'll know how many stills are left in the SD card. Just kudos to Fujifilm for sticking to the guns and trying something new. And I really like the direction they're heading. With that said, the two points that are really tempting to upgrade from my good old X-H1 to the X-H2S. Is number one, 4K 120. We all know that the X-H1 does have 120, but that is like on a really plugged up with aliasing and more red 1080p footage. In my opinion, it's not that usable. Depending on the scenario, you could get away with it. I would rather shoot 1080p 60 frames and then conform it to 24p. You could get decent slow-mo with the X-H1 still, but again, nothing beats 4K, actual 4K 120. And I'm sure the 4K 60 is gonna be so clean on the X-H2S. So definitely that's one thing that is just like I'm biting my nails on. But then the second point that I really love about the X-H2S 
is F-Log2. You know I love shooting log. You see my channel, whether it's my X-H1, my Sony A7S in S-Log2, or even my Canon EOS M. I turn everything into either Sony S-Log3 or the Alexa C-Log. No matter what, I love log. And with the addition of F-Log2, you're pushing the high dynamic range from like over 14 stops. That is like cheat code level. You know, you could get away with shooting F-Log2 in so many different scenarios, backlit, outside, in the middle of the day, in the desert, doesn't matter. F-Log2 is gonna come in handy and I'm happy to see that they have improved the ISO noise that comes from shooting in log. It's really awesome. That's another tempting feature that I would really love to have right now and use it in my videos. But guys, with the conclusion is that even though those features are great, F-Log2, 4K 120, I don't really use them that much. So that's why this YouTuber is gonna stick with the old gear he has and try to continue to improve the footage using the gear by improving my lighting, improving the audio, and also my storytelling, my talking. I'm still nervous. I'm, I still feel cringy talking in front of a lens. So I got other things to improve as opposed to just upgrading the camera. Guys, I would love to hear your two cents. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, thank you so much for sticking around in this video, even though I'm not showing you the real camera, the X-H2, I don't have it with me, just the older uh, brother here, the X-H1. But a lot of YouTubers don't have the camera either, and they're talking about it. And I just want to throw in my two cents in there that the issues that plug Fujifilm are still apparent in their flagship model. So hopefully, Fujifilm, if you ever get this message, if you ever get this video or uh, notice that the issue is there, please do something about it. We are waiting patiently. But until then, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.